game show, uh, a reality show in the UK that I imagine, I'm just assuming most of our listeners would probably want to apply for. It's uh, Scouting for Well-Endowed Fellas, and it's called Too Large for Love. It's a documentary reality. Well, my passport's theory. expired. I'd, I'd love to go, but uh, I guess I have to stay to bar when I do. <laughs> It's a new British series. It'll uh, reveal the often harsh realities of living with just a, a massive penis. Um, a statement from the producer says that this show aims to discuss the hidden problems of living with a large penis, how it affects all aspects of life, including your sex life, and what help is out there for those in need. Uh, nudity not required, but definitely encouraged. I, uh, I'd comment on it, but I got an ongoing lawsuit with the producers because I had a game show called Sack Attack. It was guys with huge scrotums, and we scouted for these guys. And again, I think this is a fucking blatant ripoff of my Sack Attack idea, which I had copywritten, right. by the way. So again, yeah. because... I remember you... you, you, you jo- you joined like 20 gyms just in research. Yeah, I did. I did a lot of fucking leg work and inner thigh work. And I talked more about it, but Garagos has said, nah, just, just keep it on the down low until, until they're served. So I can't really get into all well, the Well, you know, details. I was... Yes. I was working on that show about big boobs called Pendulous, and then I yes. went ahead and got that reduction, and oh, now that's all went to Now me. you're on Pendulous. That's right. <laughs> When, uh, can we, all right, let's see if we can figure this out. Uh, Big Dick. Um, I think there's a sort of medical cutoff for when you technically get to be a dwarf or a midget or a little person. Like, Chris is short. Chris is short, but he doesn't get a fucking handicap placard on his Prius. I know, it sucks, yeah. Yeah, you you got all the negative of short minus (laughs) the parking space in front of the Costco, right? It's it's four foot ten or less. If you can, Chris, if you can still shop in the adult section, you're you're officially not a dwarf. So four foot four feet or less. Four foot ten or less for a male adult, and you can get dwarf status. Okay, now. We also need a dwarf size for a dick, and we also need when it becomes a large hog. You know what I mean? Like, we need a cutoff. Like, is it seven and three sixteenths, or am I outing myself? Uh, maybe make it an even eight. Like, where are we? And we have to factor in girth, and that's why it can't just be about pulling out a ruler. We have to do the water displacement. We have to. How many milliliters do you displace? You know what I mean? I think if we had, like, how many cc's do you... And again, I don't want to make a whole thing about it. We just lower you down onto a beaker. (laughs) We didn't explicably make the water blue like they do in the tampon commercials. Because the camera, you know, just kind of catch the camera. Are you recording? Are you recording this? Yes, yes, we have. Well, for my show, we we're going to do it with the scrotum sack. But now these guys ripped off. So, what do you think? Like, we do have to figure out what a huge dong is first, and 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 I think we need to have a. a it needs to be measured. Like, it it, it needs to be. Or maybe we treat it like the NFL combine, you know, see what the vertical is, the 40 time, uh, hog to sack ratio. (laughs) It's also got to factor that in. Who's got the biggest dick out there, Gina? Is it that? Yeah, I'm looking on live science. Uh, There's a guy, an actor in New York, uh, named uh, Jonah Falcon. Jonah Falcon. Yeah. Yeah. Who He's, claims to have a 13 and a half inch hog? No, it's it's, it's verified. Oh, okay. What by you? Yeah. <laughs> He's been the subject of many uh, articles and. And the smallest. Any guesses on the smallest male penis, uh, adult penis? <laughs> uh, no. Give it to us. Inch and a half. Inch and a half. Now. Oh yeah. my. 
Just so we can get on the same page <laughs> and at the risk of repeating myself, you do know, because people don't measure their dick in a fair way. Like I've seen guys go full Harry Carey with the fucking yardstick. Like they've sucked in three and a half inches. It's like literally puncturing their spleen, trying to bury the first three inches. Oh, 11 inch cock, you know? Guy gives himself a C-section trying to swallow four inches of ruler. Unfair. You, the only scientific way to do it is with a piece of yarn. And it goes as follows. Center of the anus, once around the balls to just past the tip. And then you lay that out. It's the only scientific way to do it. And when I say many just times. past the tip, you, come on. Now, you're, you're, we're taking you at your word. Do not get too generous <laughs> with that yard. Just past. Sorry, Gina. What else we got? So, just, well, yeah. just, just for the men out there, I get it. You, it. Very impressive. But I don't know. And I remember, I'm in L.A., so I don't know a man or woman who wants an 11-inch penis inside them. Well, that's a good Gross. point. <laughs> oh, literally, it's a good point. Yeah, it's funny. We always talk about the women like, oh, man, nobody wants to have to deal with that, you know. Um, but what about the fellas, you know, because that's a yeah, real yeah. commitment. Like the, 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 the gay We know dudes. about size queens. Are there size queens on the other team? I mean, I think so, and more power to you. But, um, oh, speaking of that, guess what I just found out? Um, and I don't know if there's any in L.A. or across America, but I know in New York and on the East Coast, there's like a legit fisting community. Oh. <laughs> so perhaps I should give, give them a ring and find out because there's a community. They have like conventions. Tell my dog his new live show. <laughs> well, it takes a village, Gina. Even it amongst the fisting community. Oh my God! <laughs> do they have a do they have like a storefront? Like, is there any chance a dad could be walking past and see his son and the Mister Fisters over there? And go, the fuck is he doing in there? They see a guy with a black power hand, and they're like, Oh, oh, yeah. we know you. Yeah, hey brother, can I borrow your pick? You don't have an afro. Oh no, I just need the handle. Uh. All right, sorry. All right, moving on. Let's talk a little Mike Tyson. Um, Hold on, is this? He says, are they yeah. auditioning for this new show with the guy with the huge hogs? Yeah. I'd like to just go down to audition, <laughs> not because I have a big dick, just because I would like to say that's where I was. <laughs> you know what I mean? Adam, you're half hour late to the show. Where were you? Oh, uh, if anyone needs me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, I spent the whole fucking day down at the uh, huge hog audition. It was grueling. Really? Grueling. Wow. I, got a brunch, I brought a Gatorade because I am fucking dehydrated, man. Yeah, wow. it was a long day. But, you know... Uh, they put a call out for guys with huge hogs. So, you know, I had to answer so the call. So that's where you ended up? Yeah, it was, it was like, uh, like when Batman sees the bat signal up there, you know. I just see that huge hog waving in the clouds, and I, I answered the call. Hey, wow. Brian, you would have done the same if you didn't have a micro penis. That's true, 100% true. Yeah, so I went down there. It's kind of nice to be, you know, a little bit of a fraternity. You know what I mean? Like, you know, guys, like, you know, you go to one of those Mothers Against Drunk Driving uh, meetings and it's all people that have been in the same place, except for instead of your kid being killed, you have a huge hog. <laughs> so anyway, that's why I'm late. <laughs> I took, uh, if you don't believe me, I took uh, 217 pictures while I was there. <laughs> Uh, they better the not say Getty image of No, just waiting in line. Not not once we got oh, in. Oh, sure, Obviously, sure. that's a no phone zone there. You know. Right. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, the building had me impressed. Yeah, the building had foil up on the windows, so that's how I knew where it was. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> whatever you're doing, let's get back to it. I was just down. Yeah. Yeah. You know, let's start auditioning because it was a show for guys with huge dicks. Yeah. 
Wow. Even, yeah. even if you're rocking a two and a half incher, it behooves you to show up and stand in line. Yeah. If people see you, like, oh, that's the line of the guys. Right. Yeah. Huge yeah that's, what I'm, that, that's the plan. Yeah. Yeah. If they did a, a game show about guys who are very excellent at eating pussy, I'd probably go down and be photographed in that line, too, you know. I'd, I'd immediately, I, I would bug out as soon as the camera left, but yeah. Sorry, Gina, what else we got? Yeah, no, my pleasure. Um, Mike Tyson says that when he fought Roy Jones in 2020, Oh, he speaking was on of Tyson, lot- hold on. Let me say this about, uh, like, the guy uh, Falconer with the huge hog in, in New York City. Yeah. I think they did an MTV show about him. So, and Mike Tyson. So, if you're Mike Tyson or you're the guy with the huge dick, you will definitely scare away a certain percentage of the populace, but there'll be a large enough group that wants to go. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) Mike Tyson needs bodyguards because even though he's the baddest man on the planet, there's a small percentage of crazy people who live in this country who want to fuck with the baddest man on the planet. And I would say there's a small group of women who want to have a go (laughs) with the baddest cock on the planet, right? Show of hands, They want to go a couple rounds at the champ. (laughs) So I think it would work out for him, right? I'm basing, I'm loosely basing this on the amount of pussy midgets get. <laughs> midgets get a Can't ton elaborate. of pussy. If you ever talk to little midget dudes, they're always talking about the fucking blonde twins they were plowing the night before. And you go, why is it? Because it's a curiosity factor. I think I think it's the same thing. And uh, by the way, you'd probably get the dwarf fuckers would probably be the same crew that were hanging on the giant hawk. You want to talk about feast or famine? <laughs> All right. It's important. And if, if you're going to fuck yeah, a dwarf or you're going to fuck a guy with a huge hog, you got to do it in the right order. <laughs> Although I could make a strong argument for both directions. What do you guys think, ladies? If you're gonna go, let's say Wednesday night is dwarf night, Thursday night is huge hog night, or do you flip the script? Do you start with the huge hog and then go dwarf? Uh, no, oh, no, I just got a text. I just got a text from Brad Williams. He says he'd like to have a word with you <laughs> after your performance. I think you got it. Well, this is tough. I, I'll tell you why. Let's remove your vagina from the equation for a second. I think emotionally for the dwarf, you have to start with him. I don't think you could go way up. from that Duraflame log to that chapstick. <laughs> He'll read it on your face, you know what I mean? He'll see it in your eyes. He'll see the relief, maybe the, he'll crack a smile, maybe a little snicker. I think you, for the dwarf, emotionally, you, you start with the dwarf. Okay. All right, I got this down now. I'm glad okay, we, got we can down. move on. Do you, do you guys agree, or, okay. or or don't you, Gina? Who do you start with? I, I was curious to see what your argument was going to be for the other way around, because that I don't I don't foresee being a, a good time. The really only hard. other argument you can make for the other way around, I think, is after getting reamed out by uh, Jonah Falcon. <laughs> to getting. <laughs> The dwarf. The dwarf might be like a nice massage the next day. You wouldn't feel it. But what I'm saying is just think about all the dwarfs been through. You know what I mean? Made fun of on the school yard. All the dwarfs been through? What about the woman getting plowed by a 13 and a half incher? She should be in a wheelchair with an ice pack. This guy's got it. Yeah, I get it. But emotionally, they do the dwarf toss in the pro wrestling, you know. They have to play the fucking leprechaun every year for St. Patty's Day and then one of Santa's elves. You know, it's it's humiliating. And now you're laughing at him because you just got done being reamed by a giant hog. Yeah, I think the last thing a guy wants to hear when he takes his pants off is, oh, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Are you in yet? Who dodged that bullet. <laughs> it's going to sound like ringing that dinner triangle. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, so Gina, you go whole hog first and then dwarf second? No, I'm not insane. You go you dwarf. do the appetizer, then the entree. Okay. The cocktail right. wiener, then, yeah. the, then, okay. then the porterhouse. All right, we good with that? Okay. Yeah, okay, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Has the tribal council all weighed in? I think we've signed okay. off. Let me tell, yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so Mike Tyson says that when he fought Roy Jones Jr. in 2020, he was on a metric ton of psychedelic mushrooms. Uh, Tyson told the Pivot podcast that taking mushrooms and smoking weed isn't just for mental health. He said, it helps me train, it helps me box better. When I'm fighting, I really don't feel the punches. It's really just like some magical shit. He added that he wished he knew about the positive impacts of mushrooms and weed earlier in his career. He wouldn't have felt anything. Yeah, he's. I, I interviewed Tyson at his uh, house many years ago. And I, I remember, you remember Tyson about, this is about 10 years ago, was like shuffling and looking very old and mm. kind of, he looked a little decrepit. Remember they made that doc uh, yes. about him yep. and he was kind of like moving like an old blues singer and stuff. And I was like, what happened? And then I interviewed him and he got, he was spry and everything and he got in a really good shape and he, he sort of made a, made a comeback. But when I was interviewing him, I always thought it was funny because I go, uh, I go, Mike, you look good now. Like the last time I saw you, you were kind of hunched over and shuffling around and you look weak, but you look strong and positive. And he's like, yeah, man, uh, I don't drink. I gave up the drinking. Uh, I gave up uh, the drugs, no, no pills, no cocaine, no booze, no nothing. And I'm like, oh, OK. Uh, so he's like, he's like, no booze, no coke. Uh, no pills, no drugs, and I'm like, oh, no weed? And he's like, whoa, slow down. <laughs> I was like, so he kind of, I think he went from sort of drugs as we know them, more, more in that realm, to the mushroom and the pot, and that's a, right. that's a good thing. Although I don't, I don't know, because he wishes he was you know, smoking a lot of spleef and doing a lot of mushrooms in his prime, you know, back in his day. But Mike Tyson's whole persona was he was a maniac and he was furious and he was a beast in there. And he beat people by sheer force of will because he was so intimidating. And I just feel like the hippy dippy mushroom Mike Tyson at 19, we might not know who he was today. True. All right, yeah, sorry. but can you imagine getting being completely fucked up on mushrooms and getting punched in the face? That would be like the seventh circle of hell. I can't imagine anything more frightening. Plus, I feel like if I did a whole bunch of mushrooms and had Roy Jones like work work me, and he landed one good shot to the body, I think I'd shit myself. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure if I had a bag of mushrooms and Roy Jones went downstairs. I would fucking shit myself. <laughs> Roy Jones, this guy loved fighting so much that he fought in like 55 professional fights. But, and then when he got home, his chickens fought. He, like, he, he did cockfighting when he got home. He was so into combat that when he was done beating the shit out of people, he would go back to his home and there'd be cockfights going on. I think he got into trouble with cockfighting. Um, I know Speaking we, of which, that's the name of that show that's going to be out in the UK. Yes, that's right. I know, uh, I know everyone looks down their nose at cockfighting, uh, and I definitely judge those who do the dogfighting, you know, the Michael Vick folks out there, but cockfighting, if, if there's, I eat like 70 chickens a year. I I've only eat like three Same. dogs. Uh, I just feel like as long as there's an El Pollo Loco on every fucking corner in America, we shouldn't be judging. You know what I mean? Like if they had pig fighting, I'd just be more, more bacon for me, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, if, if we eat it, we should be able to fight it. You That's know? actually a really good point, and they should advertise it like, you want to eat the champion. Oh, combat chicken. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, like, I don't... Extra I, crispy and extra feisty. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't condone dog fighting, 
cat fighting, although good luck getting them to do anything. Horse fighting. Uh, sea turtle fighting. Shit I don't eat. The list goes on. The list goes on. Yeah, I cannot have time tonight to list all the things that I don't condone in the fighting. But if uh, anything that's good in a taco, fight it out. I'll eat the loser. <laughs> Let's do one more, Gina. Oh, good. Speaking of fighting and food, three women have been arrested and charged with robbery and criminal mischief after they were filmed destroying a New York City restaurant and attacking the workers in a dispute for having to pay for extra French fry sauce. Oh, okay. <laughs> I always we do have my, some film for you to check out. I do my ethnic stereotype wheel in my head when I hear it's like, they destroyed the restaurant. Oh, fucking vegan activists. Fuck those cunts. <laughs> but uh, when it comes to fries, I switch to another ethnicity. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> What well, happened? you get to look at it now, so oh. they didn't want to pay the extra dollar seventy-five for the extra fry sauce, so they went crazy. Um, there's a 27-year-old, 25-year-old, 23-year-old, all facing criminal charges. Uh, the three women destroyed the computers, a cash register, other items in the restaurant. One worker was sent to the hospital for injuries, and two of the women were also seen twerking on the counter as uh, they yeah. laughed and applauded. We're, we're, we're now away away from the white vegan activists. Well, here we go. We're very far away. <laughs> They're back there. Jesus Christ. First off... For a dollar seventy-five. I am... <sighs> Okay, we flew, where we, what airline we fly? A lot of Regent? Allegiant. Allegiant, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> they charged us five bucks each for a fucking boarding pass. Just to print we out went, the boarding pass, yeah. We, we went to check what? in, they're like, it's five bucks for this piece of paper. <laughs> Wait, doesn't that come with the, the, the chair that you paid for? You, you, one, one would think. It, it was like, I remember one time I got my, my car painted. It was like $129, and I was like, yeah. And then another fee for $33. And I'm like, what's the 33 for? They go, that's the catalyst so the paint dries. <laughs> You, oh, you, you know what? I choose. I, I know I'm not going to be I'm not going to be bullied in a in a dry paint. I'm just going to drive this car away with fucking leaves and pine cones and shit stuck to it. Like fool me just, once. Yeah, I, I I I'm with you. I think the five dollars should be rolled into the actual price of the ticket. Now, Mike tried to go, Mike started twerking, <laughs> and then he tried to go over the counter, and then I fucking... That video ended. I am absolutely amazed slash freaked out over what fucking people will do over nothing. You know what I mean? Like, I get the whole... Liam Neeson side of life where your daughter's abducted and they're turning into her <laughs> white slavery and a prostitute or something. You've got to fucking react big time to that sure. with your special set of yeah. skills. But when but they're no free ketchup, you go ape shit. Charge you a buck, buck 25 for the fucking extra barbecue sauce. Uh, you don't have to go over the counter at that. Not at all. And then, by the way, I would if I would call what would you call being upcharged for barbecue sauce and and the one to ten scale of life is that a two <laughs> two and a half like what happens when we get above a five you know what I mean like somebody swoops in and takes your parking spot at the Costco you're waiting for or some shit like that you like, gotta kill them you go it's full. You, 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 you fucking go full throwing stars and nunchucks. Like, what the <laughs> fuck at that point? All right. So uh, did they arrest the chicks? Was that New York, oh, did they, you say? Yeah, it was in New York. They were all very much arrested, oh. and they're awaiting charges. I will bet you, just like the dude who was in the bodega who got stabbed the other week because he went around the counter because his girlfriend's 
government-sponsored credit card didn't work on the bag of Doritos. Uh, first off, I would like to mate that guy. I'd like to reanimate him or, or, or harvest his seed and mate him with one of these bitches to get the most reactionary person on the planet, right? <laughs> you are taking the egg of a woman who physically attacks someone because someone wants to upcharge him for barbecue sauce, and then the dude who's going to go choke out the guy who works at the bodega because the fucking government credit card didn't work for his girlfriend's fucking Doritos. Could you imagine how volatile that baby would be? They just food process snack food and put it right in the bottle. <laughs> yeah. Fries, Jesus. Doritos. Jesus goddamn Christ. And the dude who went around the counter, and we were talking about this on the podcast, was on probation on probation like you know one of these bitches is on probation <laughs> why would you involve yourself in this kind of shit over nothing like i totally i get the part you get a dui you get your license suspended whatever the fucking uber guy doesn't show up and you go i'm just gonna fucking drive my car 11 blocks to the fucking in and out burger but like i get that part of breaking your probation I do not get the part where there's a 89 cent sack of Doritos and you gotta go kick the shit out of the guy who tried to work the credit card machine while on probation. I don't, with the store that's filled with cameras and a telephone. Sorry. I don't know, some ladies would say it's downright romantic. No, yeah, it's true. Over us. My fucking kids, <laughs> those little shits grew up in 7,300 square feet with a fucking infinity edge pool. So are people gonna think, oh, they're keeping it real in La Cunada. Sonny Corolla's living in the same mansion he grew up in. Still's got the same Grubhub guy dropping off the food. Keeping it real. <laughs> 